Good morning, Ben Alexander here. I've been in the power generation business since 2017. And in the course of making this channel, I've had the opportunity to drive almost every electric vehicle offered by the different brands. And today I'm at the local Chevy dealer because I'd like to talk about the moves that General Motors is making and why I think they're going to be a very, very strong competitor to Tesla, especially in the next uh, couple years between 2025 and 2030. So the first thing I'd like to talk about, I'm recording this in May of 2025, and General Motors just announced a push to produce LMR batteries. Now LMR is lithium manganese rich batteries. And the reason these are significant is that manganese is the 11th most abundant uh, mineral in the Earth's crust. It's not a rare earth metal. We're not fully dependent upon China to get that element. And lithium manganese rich batteries have a higher energy density than LFP and they also have less cost per kilowatt. Right now, batteries in General Motors electric vehicles are about $125 per kilowatt. The new LMR batteries will reduce that price per kilowatt to around $75 to $85. The reason that's significant is that the cost of the battery is one of the reasons that a brand new EV is more expensive than a brand new gas-powered General Motors vehicle. So let's talk about General Motors for a minute. You have a network of 4,000 dealerships in the United States that are either Chevy, GM, Buick, GMC, Cadillac. And General Motors is sharing it used to be called the Ultium platform, although they kind of got rid of that. But they're sharing this battery platform across multiple vehicles. They also have a really robust lineup. Um, the Chevy Bolt's a little commuter car. That was discontinued for a couple years. It's come back in 2026. I actually own a 2020 Bolt, and it's a fantastic little commuter car. They also have small SUVs like the Equinox, a little larger mid-SUVs, the Blazer. You also have pickup trucks. Uh, you, the, the Chevy Silverado has the most mileage of any electric pickup truck, more so than the Ford Lightning. Uh, you also have the huge SUVs, the Hummer, the GMC Denali, and they have that extremely large 200 kilowatt hour battery shared by the Silverado. So these are big heavy vehicles, but that's gonna change as the battery's chemistry changes and the vehicles get lighter. The other thing that General Motors is doing that's really interesting is their vehicle to home technology. If you buy any 2025 and even some 2024 GM electric vehicles, you can have you can use that vehicle to home, power your house during a blackout. And that's really cool. I mean, I'm here in Florida, so if I can power my house during a blackout, that's pretty neat. And the cost of those systems installed, it varies from 12000 to in the mid-20s. But for the amount of storage that you can draw from your vehicle, it's actually a much better solution than any gas power generator or any type of power bank um, that you can buy. There's a lot of different people buy, uh, selling battery, home battery backup. So GM is not just offering a really great EV, they're also allowing you to charge your house with the EV. Now Tesla does that with the Cybertruck, but the Cybertruck is not, the Cybertruck is the only Tesla vehicle that currently can power your house. Now is Tesla going to open up that capability? They probably will. But I think right now GM really has the advantage. Now another, another company that's innovating on EVs a lot is Hyundai but you know if you look at Hyundai and Kia they only have about 800 dealerships around the United States the other advantage I think that Chevy has is generations of Americans going back 100 years have been driving Chevy vehicles so it's not much of a stretch to go from driving a gas powered 2020 Chevy Blazer to go into the dealership and say hey let me try that electric Blazer 
or the Equinox. Not only that, but I like the styling. If you look here, there's one of the Equinoxes. I've noticed these all over the roads. So if you compare the big three, you have obviously Dodge, which is Stellantis. Stellantis is doing some interesting things with factorial and solid state batteries. I did get to drive the Dodge electric Daytona. It was a pretty good vehicle. It was just the pricing was up around $80,000. So the pricing was kind of broken. I've also driven the Ford products, the uh, F-130 Lightning, the E-Transit van, and of course the Mustang, which is kind of SUV. My one, my one dig on Ford, and by the way, I'm not someone who hates Ford or doesn't like Ford. I think Ford is a, Ford's a strong company with a strong history. I just think the ride and the make and the finish in the Ford, it feels, um, it feels different than the Chevy. One of the things I've noticed, the first Chevy EV actually that I drove was the Cadillac Lyric. I was actually working for Mercedes and they had a used Cadillac Lyric on the lot, so I was kind of curious. I went out and drove it, and I was very impressed with it. And of course, recently I just bought a 2025 Chevy Blazer, which is essentially the uh, same platform as a Cadillac Lyric, same interior, same, same everything. And when you think about it, if Chevy is using the Blazer platform, and they're selling it to Honda so they can make the Prologue, and they're selling that same platform to Acura so they make the ZDX, that says a lot about the excellence of the platform. I don't think Honda or Acura would be buying a Chevy platform unless it was top notch. So that's my take. It's uh, May of 2025. There's a lot of exciting things happening with electric cars. If you haven't gone out and driven an electric car and you own a home, I would highly encourage you to do it. Because here's the thing. If you own a house, you can put a 240 volt outlet on the wall and you can buy an EV and you can charge your car at home and depending on your commute your electric bill is only going to go up de depending on your rate maybe thirty to fifty dollars a month but you're going to spend a lot more than that on gas the other thing about EVs is there's thousands of parts thousands of more parts in an electric in a, in a combustion vehicle versus an electric vehicle electric vehicles are simple you don't have exhaust, you don't have fuel tank, you don't have fuel pumps. There's le they, they do have coolant systems for the battery, and there are uh, transmission fluid systems, but they're simpler in an EV, and they're easier to fix. So if you've never driven an EV and you own a home, I would strongly encourage you to check it out for your next vehicle. If you rent, that presents a difficulty because then you have to fight for charger space with whomever. But here's the thing, man. There's 81 million single-family homes across the United States. And I really believe that it's less expensive to own an EV. It's a more pleasant driving car. It's a quieter car. It's a smoother car. And you're not going to have the maintenance costs. I think once the American public realizes that, I think you're seeing a lot of people buy uh, electric vehicles, especially in the next 10 years. And they don't have to be shoved down your throat. They don't need government incentives. They're going to be good enough to stand alone. Anyway, that's my take. Have a great day, folks.